Oh, welcome to Thought for the Day. Sorry, it's a little bit late going out. On Monday, uh, in his Thought for the Day, Terry talked about his plans to move his study and to tidy it up. And it made me think a bit about, about tidiness. Um, back in, I think, the, be the beginning of the first lockdown, uh, when we were all t stuck in our homes, I think many of us made great plans to, to tidy stuff up. We embarked on tidying up projects. We thought we're going to be here for a while. Might as well actually, actually do that job, clear the garage, the job that we've been hoping to do for ages. Uh, some of you may remember that uh, Lawrence even wrote a song about it. If I, if I remember, I'll put, post a link to that in the, in the chat on, on when, I, when I post this video. But it made me think too that maybe there's a, as I thought about Terry's plans, that maybe there's a, a bit of a problem with tidiness. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I love tidiness. I find untidy spaces dis depressing, distracting. Um, I, I really like, like to get the, the bed made uh, in, uh, straight after I get up so that the, the room looks, looks tidy. In untidy spaces I can't find things, I lose them, I, I come across them later and realise there's things I should have done that I, that I haven't done. And I just think, I, I just, I, I like tidiness. I, I, uh, so if, you, if you sometimes look around my study, you might not, uh, uh, might not believe it, but I do love tidiness. Uh, a few months ago, I realized I tidied my shoe cupboard, the place where I put, just the bottom of the wardrobe where I put my shoes, uh, before I just thrown, thrown shoes in there, and it was okay. But they were always in a jumble. Whenever I wanted, wanted a pair of shoes, it was a matter of digging it out from under, underneath things, and if I was sleepy in the morning, uh, it just—it was just so nice. And then I thought, well, actually, I can lay these out, and here they are, all my shoes, a neat row. I know where they are. I, I just found that nice. Maybe, maybe that says something about about me. But actually, um, I'm not sure tidiness is quite all it's cracked up to be. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is that we can think that tidying things up is going to sort everything out. Uh, I, I used to love visiting, uh, when we lived in the south, uh, the, uh, the National Trust property, which I think it's called Batemans, where Rudyard Kipling lived for the, the later part of his life. And upstairs in that house, he's got this gorgeous study. It's got a great big wooden desk where he, he used to write. The window looks out over the Sussex countryside, down the hill, um, probably to the, the place where he imagined the children playing in Puck of Pook's Hill, uh, and another window, window on, on the side which looks out, out in, in a different direction. I think there's some hills in, in that direction, if I rem remember rightly. And I, I remember when I went up there, I thought, wow, if I, if I had this study, I, I, I'm not sure I think quite explicitly, but if I had a study, study like this, I'd, I'd write amazing things. This must be, just must be an inspiring place to be. Uh, when when you're wanting to write, uh, that his famous poem "If" was up on the, up on the wall there, a poem that again that, that I love, and I thought, wow, this would be a place. And I've seen uh, colleague studies, other other clergy's studies uh, over the over the years, and thought these are great places. I would love to have a, a study that had space space to have uh, books out, uh, space to. Uh, maybe with, with an armchair to sit down to, to read if I wanted just to uh, engross, myself something, uh, engross myself in something, a nice desk where I could work with a space to work. And here I am at St Albans, and I've got it. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a look round now, but, but if you look round this study, it's a lovely space. My, sp my desk over there, my big desk with my computer, books up on the wall. Down here where I'm sitting, I've got our armchairs. And thanks to, to Derek, Derek who gave me these armchairs. I've got a nice place to sit. I've got more books over there. There's space for the stuff. There's, things are, are relatively organised. It's not, it's not perfectly tidy. But this, in many ways, is, is the study I dreamed of having. But even in here, I get distracted. Even in here, I find I get... I get stuck for ideas, nothing to say. A tidy room doesn't doesn't sort out the the emptiness, the the fallibility of my mind. 
And tidiness is challenging in another way. Uh, it, it, when we tidy things up, it reveals mess, doesn't it? We tidy one bit up and we see the mess that's beyond it. So if you start picking up litter on a, 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 an area, you pick up the, the bits of litter that were distracting you and then you see all the rest. And it's one layer after another. And my shoe cupboard I mentioned. I, I thought I had a, had a relatively kind of simple uh, had, had, was not demanding in terms of shoes. I mean, you read these things about the average woman has 77 pairs of shoes, and I thought, well, I'm not, uh, I don't go there. I need to, I just need the, the shoes that I need, and it's, I only have a few pairs. And I tidied my, up my shoe cupboard, and there they were, just the, a few pairs of shoes. Until around the house, I realized that there were other pairs, and the tidy thing was to bring them, bring them into the shoe cupboard, and then Actually, my shoe cupboard revealed that I wasn't quite as economical uh, with shoes as I thought I was. I'd got rather more pairs if I, if I really added up all the different ones. And it revealed something about me that maybe I didn't terribly want to know. I, I was thinking I had a little bit of pride about that. I mean, I a nice, simple life, just a, just a this couple of pairs I need. Well, actually, it wasn't a couple, it was six. And then there was space for six. And then when I got the others in, there were seven and eight. And I, um, I'm not quite who I cracked up, who I thought I was. And, and I think it just, it just spoke to me really, really a little bit about the way that God shines a light in the same way into our lives. Um, he longs to shine his light into our lives so that to, to expose the things that, that need to change. But he doesn't do it like a, a policeman saying, oh, there's that, you, you've got mess, mess over there. Now his way of tidying is different. That as he shines his light and he invites us, he says, "Get the things out. Pour out your hearts to me." And as we unload them, or we get, it's like we get all the stuff, the mess in our garage. We lay it out on the drive as we pour out our hearts to him. He says, "Now come, let me, let me put it back together, put it back, back in with you. Let me help you to, to throw away those things which really don't matter as much as you thought they do. Let me, help, let me put, put your." thinking back together with the really important things on top where they where they can be seen and let me put your thinking back together again with me here living in the midst of it so if you're still working on those tidying projects maybe you look at a tidying project on your heart and your mind and remember to leave space for Jesus right at the center god bless